Hello world, welcome to the 78th video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. One of the main differences between Apple Siri, Amazon's Alexa, and Microsoft's Cortana, and my digital assistant that I'm hoping to build named Shane, is that other digital assistants are primarily single command digital assistants meaning that uh, they operate the same no matter who is operating it. And so they have very little memory. They can't recall from previous commands. You can ask it to do the same thing over and over. And so um, what I'm hoping is that Shane is more personalized to me. And so just like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics, you can tell they have more of a relationship. And that's probably due to um, Shane or the, in this case, Jarvis having a memory. And so to do this, um, I want Shane's programs, files, and databases to be centralized. So when I'm using instances of Shane on my laptop, or in my car, or when it's accessing surveillance systems, or whatever, they all access the same files to do this. Now, I will need local storage, of course, for it to operate if the internet goes down but primarily I want it to be centralized so basically a brain and so to do that I'll be using what's called a network attached storage server or NAS for short and this will be my brain it hooks up directly to your router and you can access it from anywhere and we'll be doing that in future videos using Python so I purchased Synology's DS 218 two bay NAS and a Seagate 4 terabyte 3.5 inch hard drive. And so this is incredibly simple for how hard networking actually can be. And um, so in this video, we're going to be covering the setup of our NAS for the first time. And this will be the first video in my NAS and Python playlist. So the first thing you need to do is install the hard drive into the bays. Um, I was going to make a video on how to do it, but seriously, there's a quick installation guide and it's super easy. Uh, next, you need to uh, connect the LAN cable to your router. So the LAN cable goes directly to your router in the back here to your router and it doesn't go to your laptop or your computer. Then you connect the power and you turn on the power using the power button here. Uh, let it cycle through. You'll hear some beeping. And while that's happening, go to step two. And that is to create the Synology account. And you go that, you do that by going here, accountsynology.com, and then you create an account. And then once you do that, by then the Synology um, NAS with the hard disk already installed should power on, go through its cycle, and be ready for you to access it. So let's do that now. Okay, now that we have connected the NAS, turned it on, and set up our Synology uh, account, now we're going to actually install it. So Synology has an automated system that automatically finds it for you. So you just type into a browser, find.synology.com, and it will pull up this web assistant, and then it'll search for our NAS on our network, and it found it. If you have um, a lot of things connected to your router, then you will need to scroll through it, but it found mine right away. So let's connect to it. Make sure you have read it. So, okay. And now it is connecting to our NAS. And then you click Setup. And we're going to install now. Okay, so there's one hard disk hooked up um, so that all the data is going to be removed. And then we are going to. Um, install the disk station manager software okay. 
Okay, so next you would need to create an administrator account for this this station. So I'm going to call it something. Give it a password. Okay, now it's going to prepare storage space. All right, so the quick connect ID is how you access it from any uh, device that has the Synology software on it. Okay, so we're going to click on the, we already have an existing Synology account. So let's log into that. And that is our um, following address that you can use to connect to your to your uh, NAS from anywhere. So this is kind of like your own Google Drive, except the servers aren't on some uh, Google server farm somewhere for other people to access, or this is just at your home or wherever you have this information. So there's some recommended packages on here that you can set up. So we're go I'm going to skip this step. Okay. Um, so I am not going to select this. Press go. Got it. All right, so you're going to have to decide if you want all of this stuff. So privacy statement. OK, so this is the main menu where you can access the package centers right here. So it offers a bunch of the packages. This is the control panel you need. And it gives you all the information that you need for this. Okay, so here are your options. So you have to set it up for the first time to actually use it. So you need to go to the main menu, storage manager. Okay, so once you're here at the storage manager, you have to see. So it looks like my, if you follow mine in 2020, it already sets a volume here. If you don't have this, this SHR BRTFs, and you see how it says RAID right here, then you will have to create your own um, volume manager by going to create. Then you would select SHR. If you have a four bay or greater um, with four hard drives in, they recommend you do SHR2 BTRFs and then RAID. But if you're doing this in 2020, then Synology already creates this storage volume for you. And as you can see, it's the full amount right here, 3.49 terabytes, less the you know pre and package software. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. In future videos, we're going to be using Python to access share drives and to automatically back up certain files that um, the digital assistant will use. And so I hope you enjoyed this video. Please consider subscribing so you can watch me continue to build my own digital assistant. Please like this video and leave a comment. Thanks. Goodbye, world.